Hey there guys, in today's video we are going to be talking about displaying advertisement in your mobile applications. So this is possible since the release of Flat version 0.25.0. .0. So I personally added this feature and that's why I'm very happy to talk about it today. So we have two types of ads in Flat, the banner ad, which is this, which you can see over here. And we have the interstitial ad, which is this one. So in the Flat documentation, under controls, information displays, you're going to find ads. So as I said before, ads is only available for the mobile platforms, so Android and iOS. Here we have an example. We are going to have a closer look at this example in a while. Here, the quick demo, which I showed a while ago. Here, the two types available. So the social ad and banner ad are the only two types available for now. So AdMob provides app and unit IDs for testing purposes. So here we have the AdMob app ID, which is this string. Here we have the banner ad unit ID for Android, which is this one. And we have another one for iOS. And the same for interstitial ad, we have one for Android, one for iOS. So each ad type has a specific unit ID on a specific platform or on each platform. So Android has its own, which is different from the iOS one. So you always need to make sure you use the correct value on the correct platform. Remember to replace these values with your own when you are ready to package your application. So concerning packaging, when packaging an application that makes use of ads, of the ad controls, you need to include the ads package. So including the ads package can be done using this include packages and then you specify flat ads or you can equally do that through the pyproject.toml. So if you go to publishing flat app in the flat documentation and then including optional controls, here we have the ads. And here you can see we have one option or one possibility of including a flat package which is through the CLI command. So you can say flat build and then your platform and then include packages. Then you specify the different packages you want to include like flat ads, or you can specify it through the pipe project, the tunnel, which is the option I would choose for this video. We are going to have a look at all that in a while. So another thing you need to specify is the AdMob app ID. I said before that AdMob itself provides you with an app ID for testing purposes but you might also want to use your specific app id so not the one used by everyone for testing but you might want to create a new one so you simply click on this link and then here you can find all the information concerning it so we have here you are going to create an account on AdMob. click on apps in the sidebar then click on view all apps then locate your application click on copy app id and uh, the same goes for the add unit id so for these values over here you can equally find them following these steps so simply click on the link over here and you're going to find all the documentation atmo provides concerning these two values which are the app id and the add unit id so this is how you specify the app id inside your pipe project you simply do it like this and then replace this value with your app id or from the terminal you can do it like this so for android let build apk for instance and then say android metadata then specify the key value pair so exactly this one you specify it over here the same goes for ios so we have flat build ipa and then info playlist then you specify this key value pair which is exactly the same we have over here So I am on my PyCharm ID as usual and inside this display ads folder, I have two files, my main.py file, which contains the code I copied from the documentation, so application code. And we have another file, which is the pyproject.toml, which contains our packaging configuration. More about it in a while. So inside this main.py file, our application is quite simple. So here I'm defining the horizontal alignment of the page, so center. And here we are setting or defining the unit ID of the interstitial ad. So it is based on a conditional statement. So if the page.platform, so the platform on which this application is going to run, if it is Android, then we are going to be using this value, else we are going to be using this one. 
So you all know, I mentioned at the beginning, ads can only be run on Android or on iOS. So if over here we are talking about Android, it simply means the else condition goes about iOS because ads cannot be run on the other platforms. So Windows, Linux, Mac OS and the web platform. If you ask yourself, where are these values coming from? I just got them from these test values I showed here. So you can see interstitial ad unit ID on Android, we have this value and interstitial ad unit ID on iOS, we have this value. That's exactly what I'm doing over here. I have a conditional statement to pick the right value for the right platform or for the platform we're running on. So here I'm doing exactly the same for the banner unit ID. As next, we have handle interstitial close, which is a callback event function supposed to be called when the user closes the interstitial ad. What we are doing inside it is quite simple. We are removing e.control from the page.overlay. So e.control over here, I've mentioned it in several videos. It stands for the control through which the event was triggered. So in this case, the event is the onclose and through which control can this onclose be triggered? The interstitial ad. So in this case, we are removing the interstitial ad from the page overlay and we are replacing it with a new one. So here we have a function named get new interstitial ad, which provides us with a new interstitial ad, which we are appending to the page overlay, and then we are updating the page to account for this new change. So you might want to ask, why do we have to remove the previous interstitial ad from the page overlay and append or add a new one into the page? So if you move to the interstitial ad documentation, here we have the show method of the interstitial ad in order to show the interstitial ad. And I mentioned over here as a note, the interstitial ad can only be shown once. Subsequent calls to show, so to this show method, will trigger an on error. To show an interstitial ad again, you need to create a new instance of it. Interstitial ad must be added to the page overlay before calling this method. So that's exactly what we are doing. So at the beginning, we have an interstitial ad which we are adding to the page overlay. So right at the beginning or at the creation or the start of the application, we are creating a new interstitial ad, adding it to the page overlay. And uh, over here, when the user clicks this first button, so show interstitial ad, we are calling the dot show method, which is going to display the interstitial ad on the page. Now, when the user closes the interstitial ad by pressing that close button at the top right, this method gets called and here, inside this method we decide to remove this old one so what has already been used and we decide to replace it with a new interstitial ad for the banner ad it's quite simple we have over here a button show banner ad when you click it it calls this method display new banner ad so display new banner ad is this function over here we are simply adding into the page a container which contains the banner ad so i think that's it for this main.py Let's move to the pyproject.toml, which contains our packaging configuration. So these ones are the poetry values. So the name of the project, the version, the description, the Python version it requires, the authors of the project. And here we have something very important, the dependencies. So the application dependency is obviously flat. So we need flat version 0.26.0, which is the latest version at the time I'm recording this video. Here we have two dot poetry package mode false. So these are poetry values. And here we come to the important section, the flat values. So on the two dot flat, we are specifying the org. So com dot my company. I think that's the format you need to specify kind of com dot. And then you specify the company over here. We have our product ads playground, our company, my company, our copyright, copyright by Data Boy. And here we have tool dot flat dot app in which we are specifying the path in which our application files are found. So here I'm simply saying a dot to say that my application files are found at the root of the project directory. And as next, we have tool.flat.flutter in which we specify our dependencies. Our dependency is obviously flat ads. I mentioned it a while ago. When packaging an application that contains ad controls, you need to include the ads package. So to include the ads package, you can either do it like this. So using include packages from your terminal, you say flat build APK and then include packages flat ads like this, or you do it like this inside your pyproject.toml. So tool.flat.flutter and under the dependencies, 
you simply say flat ads. The next one we need to specify is the ad mob app ID. So for more details, you follow this link. So the test values for this app ID can be found over here. So you have this test value provided by AdMob. As you can see, I have my tool.flat.android.metadata for Android and I have this for iOS and I'm using this test ID provided by AdMob. So that's it for our packaging configuration. And right now we can package the application. So I'm going to move into my display ads from here check my flat version i'm using the latest flat version and i can simply say flat build apk and perhaps use a verbosity flag to see what is happening under the hood press enter and we are going to be building the application i'm going to pull up my android emulator i made a video in which i explain how you can have such an emulator i'm going to link it somewhere here at the top make sure you watch it so the apk file was successfully built and it is found in the build slash apk directory so over here in my project folder i have here my build directory inside this apk folder i have my app release.apk which is the final file we were expecting to install it on this device we simply have to drag it and drop it on the device and as you can see it gets installed and this is the application I'm going to press on the show banner ad button. You can see this is the banner ad which shows up. Let me click somewhere. So I click on the X button to close the ad. You can see why this ad send feedback. Let me go back. And what happens when I click this ad? It opens the Google ad mob because it is a test ad. Let me click on show banner ad once more. Show banner ad. Show interstitial ad. And here we have, this is an interstitial test ad. Click on it. And you can see it equally opens the Google developer guide. I'm going to close this ad. So what we defined over here is what is going to happen. So here we have this interstitial close and I'm going to click on this button. This interstitial ad is going to get removed from the page overlay. A new one is going to get appended and the page is going to get updated. So when I click on this button, that's exactly what happened. So it happened all in the background. And now when I click on show interstitial art once more, you can see a new interstitial art gets opened. So simply because we removed the old one and then appended or added a new one into the page over there. And when I close this one, I am able to open a third one So right now I want to talk about some important information you should be aware of. So you can head over to the blog and you're going to find this version 0.26.0 release announcement written by Fyodor. And here it mentions some extensibility changes. So a lot of controls have been moved to separate Python packages. So concerning flat ads, for example, here it is PyPy page. And all of the others equally have separate PyPy pages and separate GitHub repositories. So this is for flat audio. In your application files, you need to migrate from using flat.ads to using the package. This is because flat.ads is deprecated and will be removed in flat version 0.29.0. PyCharm raises an error saying no model name flat ads installed. So you can either make use of this PyCharm helper or from your terminal you can simply say pip install flat ads so here you can equally make use of this PyCharm helper confirm package installation and the package got installed you also need to mention the use of this flat ads package inside your pyproject.toml file so inside your pyproject under the dependencies you simply have to add the flat ads dependency and here you are simply telling flat to install these two packages for the good functioning of your application so here we need flat here we need flat ads and that's exactly what we are specifying in our dependencies all right guys we've come to the end of today's video as usual please drop a comment if you faced any issues or have any questions i will try my best to respond to you as soon as possible make sure you like subscribe and share for more exciting flat content
This was the Etika boy. Thanks for watching.